This is the review of WWE 2024 Royal Rumble. This show was insane. They kicked off the show with Pat McAfee showing up to do commentary. My Cole was all hyped. Pat McAfee two years in a row now showing up for the Royal Rumble commentary. Pretty dang awesome to start off the show. The first match was the women's Royal Rumble match. This this match was probably the best women's Royal Rumble match I've ever seen. It was really good. So coming out first in the women's Royal Rumble was Natalia. I was like, okay, it's Natalia. Then number two, bam, Naomi's music hits. I'm like, dang, they're starting off fast with her returning because it was pretty obvious she was in return. She was in TNA. She dropped the TNA title. Her TNA contract ended. So it was pretty obvious she was going to show up. But I guess she couldn't have, but it was pretty obvious. And I thought they were going like, to save it towards the end. But nope, they started off. She broke a record for... Her and Bailey broke a record being the longest reign, not longest reign, longest in the Royal Rumble for a women's match. It broke Rhea Ripley's record they both did. And the match keeps on going on. It was good. Uh, Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, all dominated. I think it was right around like 26 or 27. This music hits. I'm like, who the hell is that? Because I didn't recognize it. And then I, then I heard what it said. And it was Jade Cargill made her WWE in-ring debut. It was three since she... she Recently, she signed with WWE, leaving AEW, but they haven't done anything with her. Making her in-ring de in debut, dominating everybody that got in her way. Eliminating Nia Jax, picking her up, overhead slamming her like it was absolutely nothing dominating. It was the final three was Becky Lynch, Bailey, and um, uh, Jade Cargo. No, it was not Becky Lynch. What am I thinking? Bailey, Liv Morgan, which is number 30, Liv Morgan returned. She's been gone for a while, so she's been gone from, like, injuries. Like, she's still been in the company. But Bailey, Liv Morgan, Jay Cargo was the final three. Liv Morgan eliminated Jay Cargo, and then Bailey quickly eliminated Liv Morgan to, for Bailey to win. And she's going to be going to WrestleMania, either WrestleMania 40, either challenge uh, EO Sky or Rhea Ripley. I'm thinking she's going to pick EO Sky. To like mess up damage control it'll be interesting how they build this yeah i thought the women's match women's royal rumble match was really good but the next match was for the undisputed wwe championship it was the fatal four with lna aj styles randy orton and the one and only the head of the table the tribal chief roman reigns this is actually one of the one of the only times i've wanted roman reigns to win because um actually i didn't really want him to win this was one of the only times i picked him to win because it was pretty obvious even though people were like, oh, it's a fatal forward, he could lose. No. Uh, Art, Randy Orton was dominating this match, hitting RKO after RKO. He had RKO on AJ, RKO again on AJ, hit an RKO on LA Knight. Roman goes for a Superman punch, RKO. One, two, a millisecond from three. Randy Orton gets pulled out by freaking douchebag Solo Sikoa. Then Solo Sikoa uh, was beating up Randy Orton, beating up LA Knight. AJ Styles was front of the barricade. He went to go, like, spear through, and he went, and AJ moved, and then Solo Sikoa was, like, sleeping the rest of the, the, rest of the match. He was out cold. Then, uh, after that, it was actually a pretty, it was probably one of the most clean finishes from Roman, but I wish there was no Solo Sikoa interference, because then, finally, Roman would have a clean finish since, like, 2022, but, nope, that won't ever be able to happen. So stupid. But Roman ended up uh, hitting AJ Styles with the spear, and AJ ate the pin. If you watched my prediction, I thought LA Knight was going to eat the pin. I knew Randy Orton was going to get it. They're saving Randy Orton for if, um, whenever he wants to challenge the title again there. He just recently came back from his huge back surgery, so they're, they're going to protect him for a while. But I thought this match was okay. Probably, in my opinion, the worst match of the show. There's only four matches. This was my least favorite. Because it's so predictable and boring. Next up, which was an amazing match. Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens. They, I felt like they did an amazing job. Logan Paul, even though I don't like him, he's a fantastic wrestler. For somebody that hasn't been wrestling all their life, he's fantastic. Him and Kevin Owens kicked the holy hell out of each other. And I'm like, they just beat the holy hell. They're just going at it and at it and at it. And one of Logan Paul's like goons tried handing him a brass knuckle. was an Austin Theory and Grayson Waller come out. And they were like trying to help. Logan Paul to distract the ref and stuff, and they hand Logan Paul the uh, brass knuckles, but Kevin Owens attacks him, grabs brass knuckles, hits Logan Paul, and it's one, two, literally a millisecond from three, the ref sees the brass knuckles on Kevin Owens, 
hands and it was a disqualification so logan paul retains but they're still like protecting kevin owens from losing from logan paul i don't think this is over because kevin owens gets pissed off grabs logan paul bring him outside just beating the holy hell out and uh, power bombs him through the announcer's desk and logan paul was absolutely laid out and kevin owens walked away i thought this match was really good for like a match that wasn't the royal rumble this was the better one i preferred this match over the roman reigns la Knight aj styles Randy Orton match just because it was more entertaining the roman match was pretty slow and very very predictable I, this was a very i did not i kind of figured L. logan paul was gonna win somehow i was not expecting like this i was not expecting like the disqualification of the brass knuckles very uh clever way of how they booked it and everything i really liked it i almost forgot one of the funniest parts of the show our truth entered the women's royal rumble match oh my god it was hysterical he gets in the ring he goes where's the men why is there all women and he gets instantly eliminated by nia Jax. it was so freaking funny then the men's royal rumble started number one was jay uso i was like oh my god are they gonna do it number two was jimmy uso first time of them going at each other ever since they broke up they just beat the holy hell of each other and then the match was great just going on and on um but i thought it was an amazing way to set up for wrestlemania 40 when they these two fight jay and jimmy uso really good way to start off the, the royal rumble match in the match uh carrying across bobby lasher in it uh Bobby Lashley ended up eliminating Karrion Cross, and Bobby Lashley was pulled out and eliminated by Karrion Cross illegally once he was already, even though they don't count it, it's kind of like an illegal thing. Um, then they start beating the holy out of each other. AOP comes out, beating on Bobby Lashley, and then the Street Profits come out, and it's an absolute brawl between Final Testament and Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Pretty dang awesome. But yeah, no, this, this Royal Rumble, I know I've, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of online CM Punk fanboys crying about how CM Punk lost, but this show... I thought this Royal Rumble was great. It was a little slow. I agree with people that saying this was a slower Royal Rumble. It was slower until like the last 10, 15 minutes. Last 10, 15 minutes of the Royal Rumble, I thought, was amazing. So, Braun Breaker made his main roster debut absolutely dominating, beating the holy hell out of people. I mean, like, he was decimating people. He eliminated Omos. I'm a like, he was just throwing people around. But also, almost forgot, at number four, Andrade returned to WWE from AEW. He left AEW, and now he's returned. Awesome to see Andrade back. Ricochet returned from his injury, and Sami Zayn was number 30 returning from his little injury thing. A lot of people are complaining about him being number 30. I hate that Sami Zayn doesn't get the respect. I mean, the man carried the company in 2022 during the Bloodline storyline. Like, he deserves more respect. Sami Zayn is amazing. Gunther was also dominating this match, and Drew McIntyre came out like number 28. Uh, number 21 or like 22 was Pat McAfee. He was on the commentary. He gets in the ring. He sees Omos, climbs over, gets on the edge of the ring, about eliminates himself, gets back in, looks at him, shakes his head, eliminates himself, gets back on the counter, and he goes, what the hell was that thing? It was, that thing's not human. What is that thing, Michael Cole? It was hysterical. Pat McAfee just cracks me up. It's just so funny. Also, Cody Rhodes came out at number 15. Cody Rhodes dominated this match. CM Punk came out at number 27. And the final four was CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Gunther, and Drew McIntyre. They were beating the holy hell of each other. This is when it really got interesting. Wasn't down to this final four. CM Punk ended up eliminating Drew McIntyre, which could set up stuff. And Cody ended up eliminating Gunther the exact same way how he did last year, which I thought was pretty interesting. Then it was down to CM Punk and Cody freaking Rose, the American Nightmare, versus the best in the world, CM Punk. They were just beating the holy hell out of each other. Totally set this up perfect for Raw. Just going at it, going at it. I was so stressed out. If you're subscribed to your channel, you know Cody's my favorite wrestler all time. Love him. But uh, I really want him to go to WrestleMania and fight Roman and finally become the undisputed WWE champion and finish his story. So I was so stressed out. I was like losing my mind. I'm like, oh my God, is CM Punk going to win? Is Cody going to win? Because if CM Punk won, I'm assuming he's challenging Rollins. But then you still got the Rock thing. I'm like, oh no, no. And then um, C CM Punk hit a couple of GTSs on Cody. And he goes, I'm not going to lose to Dusty Rhodes' kid. And I'm like, Oh, Cody's winning. Cody reverses one of the last GTSs, hits a crossroads, and throws CM Punk over. And Cody Rhodes makes history. After 26 years, the last person to win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles was Stone Cold Steve Austin. The only other person, other two people have done it is Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels. But after 26 years, Cody Rhodes makes history, winning the 2023 and the 2024 freaking Royal Rumble. He gets up, points to the WrestleMania sign, Pyro, and he instantly in the skybox for Seth Rollins. And Roman Reigns was starting to point at Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns stands up holding up his 
undisputed WWE title, it's obvious. It's going to be Cody. Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 14. God dang it. Cody Rhodes is going to finish the story and become the WWE undisputed champion. That's right. Finally. Finally, Cody's going to do it. No Rock. We don't need The Rock. We need Cody Rhodes as the undisputed WWE champion. Finally, Cody's done. He's made history. This show was amazing. Absolutely loved it. One of my favorite Royal Rumbles. I know people are saying the men's Royal Rumble was slow. Yeah, the first couple, like, 10, 15 minutes was slow. But after that, it got going. It was good. I'm going to give the show out of 5. Actually, I'm going to do it out of 10 because it's a pay for you. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought the undisputed title match was a little slow in the beginning. The men's match was a little slow. But otherwise, this match, I mean, not this match, this show kicked butt. It was absolutely amazing. Loved it. And I'm so goddamn happy that Cody Rhodes was able to point to WrestleMania 40. And he's going to be fighting Roman Reigns. And he's going to finally dethrone Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns can go, goodbye. Get out of here, Roman. Once Cody beats you, you can go bye-bye. Don't like you, Roman. Bye-bye. Thank God Cody won. I'm so happy. If you can't tell. This is JRW. Make sure to like, subscribe. Stay tuned for more wrestling figure content. And stay tuned for WrestleMania 40 when Cody beats Roman Reigns in Philadelphia. Hell yeah.